All right, the plan for today is I'm gonna show you guys how to wire the 1JZ VVTi. This is the JZX110 model. Um, the difference between that and the one, or JZX100, is this one comes with the rear sump on it. I know it looks like it's a little bit of a mess and a little bit incomplete. I'm currently mounting the ECU underneath the car right now, and I realized that if I waited all the way till I was done, it'd be a bit harder to show you some of the things on how to wire it. So the wiring's done. It just needs to be cleaned up for the most part, as you can tell, but I'm gonna go ahead and run through and show you guys how to do it. Alright, first things first, you guys, I want to show you the ECU that you're going to need. So this is not it. This is the JZX100 ECU. So this one only has four plugs. The difference between the JZX100 and JZX110 also is the ECU. So the JZX110, which is this one, the one with the rear sump, will have five ports. So if we look at this sheet, don't mind all the scribbles, I'll go through them, but it should have five plugs. There's a sixth plug that is the um, immobilizer, and what that does is that is the security system for a Toyota. So if you ever have a key and it has that little like black box on the end, it has a little signal in it. So when you put the key in, it knows that it's that specific key for that specific car. So someone can't make a knockoff and steal your car. Do not buy an ECU with that on. Um, if you buy it with that, your car will not start. It'll just crank all day long but never turn over. So you're going to have to look for a non-immobilizer ECU. They're kind of rare, so if you could find one, even if it's a little bit spendy, it's probably best to just grab one. All right, I'm inside the car right now, and this is where I have my ECU at the moment. Again, it's not mounted yet. This is a little bit of a mess just because I did a bit. I put extra wires in that I needed because I ran it on the outside first before I tucked in up under here by drilling a hole in the firewall for the ECU. But while we're under here, I do need to show you something because all the signal, you need three signals to keep it simple. You need, you need a constant power, which is where you just put the power wider straight to the battery. You do an ex or an on power, which is when the key is in the on position, it gives a signal and then you need a crank. And that crank is for the starter, um, things that only need to be going when it's cranking. So I'm going to pull off the back of this EFOB right here. It's just one screw right here. All it is is one screw and pop it off so I can show you guys where I wired them into. All right, so I took that off now. Now this part just goes up here and then comes back down. Now there are a lot of wires coming off the end. Um, but they're just sending signals, so that's why we're tapping into them in order to get the correct signal for each part. Each part, excuse me. So, let me start off with these tiny wires. These wires come on for when the car is on accessory. Um, and this is for the new dash that I put in, so you will not need to worry about these wires at all. Now let's go straight to the crank wire, or the on position. This red wire right here goes to the on position, and if you'll see, it goes to right where my thumb's tapping right there. This one right there, if I could read it really quickly. It is the IG2, so on the back they have little labels. I don't know how we could tell. If you see this, those little dimples right there, again, where my thumb is tapping, that's where the letters are. So IG2 is where this one goes. Uh, you just have to look for this brown wire as well. I tested these all with a multimeter. Took a bit of time. I'm gonna try to save you that right here by showing you. And this one turns on when your crank, or when the on position, this is your on position wire. So these wires kind of go into the back, but don't worry about it too much. There are just certain pins that I'll show you that all you're gonna need to do is you take a crimp or solder if you're super talented, and you just cut this wire, this brown wire, put another wire in, splice them together, go off, and then you splice off to wherever else needs the power. So I'll show you guys where to do that later, but first I wanna show you this black one right here. This is the crank wire. This one goes to another brown wire. So this one's a little harder to find if you can't remember which one is which, but this one leads up to the left-hand side. So you just need these two nodes right here. You have this one on the right-hand side for the on position, this one on the left-hand side for the crank position. And it's the same thing as the crank. You just have one wire coming out, and then anything else, that because that's going to need the signal, you'll just splice off from there. And for as much of a mess as that looks like in here, that's as simple as it is. You don't really need to do any anything specific. All these crazy wires, I was just sending two specific signals. I had to cut and recut a couple times, which is why there's extra crimps just to get it from around the side to in here and a couple mistake shortening wires. So when you see all these crimps, don't freak out. A lot of it is just me, but just these two wires, this one, brown one on the right, brown one on the left, on and cranking. That's all you need to worry about. All right, so I'm showing you this diagram because it'll make it a lot simpler when you're looking at the ECU. So this says, I know it says 2JZ GTE, but the 2JZ GTE VVTi and the 1JZ GTE VVTi have the same exact wiring. So when you're trying to wire it up, exactly the same. So I have these color coded right now so you can see where each one needs to go. So the highlight one means that it needs to be on when the key is in the on position. The green one needs to mean that it's constantly on 
which means that you're going to run a powered wire to the battery. And let me show you that really quickly. So all it would be is you have those pins, and so you have, excuse me, let's go back over here. So you have the wires like this, you ECU, you'll have, let me separate these over, you'll have three plugs on this side that are all perfectly fine, they just come with a harness, and then two that look like this, where the ends are cut off. And so with these wires right here, each pin has a wire, so say this one needs power, constant power, we'll just pull that wire off, and then we'll splice, we'll add a wire onto here, have it run all the way, and we'll do a little circle connection right here that goes straight into the battery or to the positive terminal. That right there, that's how you get constant power. So with that, you'll need to do constant power for this one right here. This is the power for the ECU, and this one right here. This is the power for the throttle. And there's one more that you'll need to do um, as well that I'll show you guys later on, but it's not on the ECU. So these two right here, are just wires that you run straight to the positive terminal. Now for these highlighted ones, these are the ones that are on in the on position. So what I have is these four wires, one, two, three, and four. They're all bunched up right there. Um, those will come off that on switch. So in the, he's in the on position. That wire that we had talked about in there that's on when the on, we had one wire spliced off coming off there. And then all we'll do is we'll take that wire and then say it's these say it's these three these wires we'll just splice them all together and then just bunch them up and then boom if you have them all connected to that one wire that one that goes back when the key is on that's how those ones get power and that's what we need for this and then the red is when it's on crank so we have the wire the black one in there where that was on with the crank have it come up have it attached to one wire right there the one that needs the crank and then that's how you run that and there, those are the wires for the ECU. So this part, your ECU is done. Your ECU is done being wired. But there is more that you need to do. So I'd cut these plugs off of the harness that it came with because I'd already wired them up and the other wires I just didn't need. So on this blue plug, this one, if you have the harness, you have five plugs and then you have these three extra ones that are a little bit, that are come off the end and they're close to it but don't quite, would reach up just like the other normal ones do. So you have these other plugs right next to the other ones. So. You don't need to worry about trying to find those ones somewhere deep buried into the harness. Anyway, this one right here, so there's this white wire, black wire, and this other black wire. So these ones all go towards the starter. This thick black one is the one that gives the main signal to the starter. So all three of these, as well as this one. So these three, you just wire straight to that crank wire. So once again, you take those wires and then wire it back to that one black crank wire that you had. Moving on to this other pin. First off, this one pin right here, don't need to worry anything about. But this pin right here, these two thick black wires, these are the thicker ones right here. Let me show you those. Those ones both go to the injectors. So what we'd have to do is these ones want to go in the on position as well. So once again, you just take these and you run it back to that one red wire that's in the ECU, or coming out of the ignition, excuse me. And then once you have those, so the key is in the on position, then it runs to these wires, and then those will give you, so your injectors have power too. Now for these, now I mentioned just a bit, a bit ago about there being one more power wire that's constantly on, and that is the mass airflow sensor. So this isn't the correct sensor, um, which is why it's not connected right now. Um, it's just a little big and wonky. This is for the JZX100. Pretty much does the same thing, but I'm just getting a special built intake with the JZX100 or 110 mass airflow sensor built into it. But all you need to do is you need to take the far right wire. It's a black and red wire. I know you can't see because I crimped and shrunk wire at all. And we're just taking one wire, and it just goes to constant power. So this just goes to constant power. Now that I'm looking back on it, I'm wondering why it didn't just go straight there. That was pretty stupid of me. But yeah, this one just gets constant power, so it's the same as if you plug it in right there. A quick note before we move to the back of the car and look at the fuel system that I have. Um, this is an igniter. This is You'll need this as like... I want to say $30 to $50, um, it just plugs into this one plug right here and all you do is you just bolt it up wherever you need to. I found a spot on the side here where it just worked out well and then that's where you put for that. Alright, we're here at the fuel system now. This is the back of the trunk. There's the front of the car here. So I did my own wiring. There is a way to tap into the existing fuel system which is a bit safer so in a crash that it will turn off. Um, I'm just putting in a safety fuel switch up front. That'll happen later. But this is what I did. So I did my own separate system where I wired in to, oh, not this one. I wired into the fuel pump that was there. So here we have a plug that goes straight into the the fuel pump. And what we did is there's one plug. It's off this black and red wire. It's hard in here. I just bunched them all together so they wouldn't be all over the place. There's a black and red one and then like a white and blue, I believe, or white and black. 
But anyway, you, you plug into the black one, all you do is you have it run up, running up to the alternator, or to the alternator, excuse me, to the relay here. You have one going off black, and then two wires running up to the front with a 15 or 30 amp fuse in there. It's really vague. I'm going to put a link in the description to the thread forum or forum thread that I use to um, do this. It's a super, super um, simplified put A and B type super plug easy deal. So I'm going to go ahead and link that in the description down below for the for the fuel system because I kind of forgot like the specifics of each one. I just know that I did it and it's done. So anyway, that's done with that. That is 95% of what you need to wire up the engine. There are just a few more things that I need to go over and then we will be completely done. So first thing, this wire right here, this is the ground that comes from the engine, um, from the block to the body. I don't have it connected right now just because, again, I was working on the wiring, but I have it grounded right here so it just swings across and all you need to do is just have that grounded onto the, the body. Um, secondly, or I don't know what secondly this is, there is a alternator wire that comes out on this side. Um, I don't, it's buried a bit under there, but what I need to tell you about it is with mine, it came cut. It's a th super thick, like one gauge wire. That's uh, black and blue, I believe it was. And all you do is you wire it up to this positive terminal. Or not this positive terminal, excuse me. Yes, you wire it up to this positive. And then lastly, you have this black one that goes all the way down here from the negative terminal, wires up and plugs into or it goes onto the body to be the body to block ground. Anyway, I really hope you guys understood that as best as you can. If you have any comments, leave them down below, or even better, um, go ahead and shoot, shoot me a message on Instagram, at philsuper. Um, I respond there a lot more quickly and will more likely see it on there than YouTube, but I'll do my best to get back to you guys. Um, I really hope this is descriptive. Don't mind the mess. I'm in the process of cleaning it up right now. I just wanted to make sure I got this video done before everything was so covered that you wouldn't be able to tell. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let's do the usual. Just like and subscribe. Leave your hit in the comments, guys. Bye.